Hey guys, today I'm going to give you my thoughts on the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. Remember that this is just my opinion and I don't actually have the shoes yet. Alright, so this shoe has been getting a lot of hype after the 2020 Olympic trials because Des Linden had them on her feet. The Brooks Hyperion Elite 1 had a lot of issues and received a lot of bad reviews, so a lot needed to be changed, especially with the midsole. The foam of the Brooks Hyperion Elite 1 is DNA Zero, which is a lighter weight EVA foam. It was a little firm for many people and it wasn't as durable as other shoes as it could only last up to around 100 miles. Brooks other shoe called the Brooks Hyperion Tempo has DNA Flash which is a much more responsive foam and got a ton of great reviews. Thus Brooks decided to use this foam in the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2 instead. DNA Flash is nitrogen infused EVA. It's a little bit squishier and provides a great responsive ride. DNA Flash is also more durable, and so you can expect more miles out of the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. A lot of brands now are adding rockers to their shoes, and Brooks decided to do the same thing with this shoe. Now that it has a rocker, that is a much smoother heel to toe transition. Now, is this shoe worth $250? To answer that question, we need to compare it to the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent, which costs $250. Let's compare the specs. In the Brooks shoe, there's 35 millimeters in the heel and 27 millimeters in the forefoot, and for a men's size 9, it weighs 7.6 ounces. On the other hand, the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent has 5 more millimeters of cushioning in the heel and the forefoot, and weighs an ounce lighter for a men's size 9. So the Nike shoe is lighter and has more cushioning, but those aren't the only factors to consider. Although the Nike Zoom X foam is really responsive, it's probably not as durable as DNA Flash. Furthermore, if you want a more traditional upper, I think the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2 would be better. The Vaporfly's upper is vapor weave, which is a little bit more plasticky. So there's a trade-off here. You can either sacrifice durability and the upper for weight and cushion, or you can sacrifice weight and cushion for durability and the comfort of the upper. Thanks guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.